Hey guys, this is Zach here, and I am back from Gen Con, and while I was there, Force of Will was showing off their two new card games, Caster Chronicles and this one, which is called, what's it called? Architect. Trading card game. <laughs> uh, I did not know a lot about this one. Caster is I knew a little bit about, because they've been, I was reading their Facebook thing about it, but there wasn't very much information about this on their Facebook for this one. And unfortunately, when I played it at Gen Con, the guy who demoed it to me had just learned it that morning, and he only played one other quick demo game to get the rules down. So I didn't have the best demo game with him. The guy was fine, he just unfortunately didn't know everything about the game, so... I don't know, I'll talk about the cards as I get into it. But they gave you a, a two half decks to learn how to play the game, and a promo card of Einstein. That's Einstein. <laughs> this game is all about, like, famous hist historic people. And that's all I know. <laughs> uh, art, awesome. The foil is actually really good on it. Uh, yeah, I don't... That's that's all I can say about that. So let's crack this open. So inside, there are your two demo decks and two playmats. Huh, Caster's only had one in there, so... <laughs> That's weird, so you have a rulebook and a playmat, or you can have two playmats for both players. Weird, okay. So let's look at one of these real quick. So here is the playmat. Uh, the field's pretty simple. You have the field. <laughs> Deck, graveyard, turn order, recover, draw, build, recruit, battle, end. Your HQ zone, where you play hand, uh, cards face down to basically uh, pay for things. Then you have your HP. You start with 20 life in this game, just like magic. Uh, pretty simple. And then the rule side. Actually, I haven't even got a chance to look over this, so I'm going to look over it really quick after I'm done with this little segment. Uh, but there you go. It's There's a lot of weird things in this game. So, yeah. let's. I'm going to set the camera down real quick, and I'm going to read this super quick before I get into the cards. Okay, wow, so I just learned a lot of things about this game that the guy did not tell me. So, we were playing a lot of things wrong in our demo game, actually, but I'll get into that in a second. So you have two decks, they're exactly the same. They are, I'm assuming, 30-card decks. They are the... They are the Neo-Roma Guild, which is what this color is, I guess. Uh, the card frames really remind me of, like, the Versus System card game from back in the day, in the new reboot, I guess. I don't know, it just seems like a very 90s card game. <laughs> Let's open this up. The backs are beautiful, though. I love the backs on these. Any kind of card game that has, like, a playing card, poker, like, card back on it is good with me. Alright, so let's look at these cards. So here is Leonardo da Vinci. Obviously. So they have attack and defense. They have a Dynacost on the left up here. And they have abilities down here. So attack and defense is what you think it is, and ability is what you think they are. Dynacost is different, so every turn in the build phase, which is before your uh, recruit phase, you pick, you take any card in your hand and put it face down in your HQ zone. Then when your recruit phase happens, you automatically get that much Dyna to spend on recruiting characters. So you don't tap your cards to get energy from them like most other games. If you have four cards in your HQ zone, you just get four energy to spend on things. I can see this being a problem with, like, longer games where you're producing, like, ten Dyna and you're trying to, like, oh, wait, I've only got three left to spend, but I spent two for this ability. I don't know, it seems really weird to me. Uh, but Leonardo da Vinci here. Kai Lun. Lun. Calamity Jane. There's... <laughs> Very weird, very weird people in this game. Chaplin, the tramp. So, uh, something that I actually like about this game, this guy has decoy, which means if a player attacks, it must attack this character Fable. It actually reminds you by putting a little shield icon down here. So, normally cards don't have that icon. So you can easily look at your opponent's board and see, oh, he's got a decoy guy there. And when we played our game, uh, we thought that you could attack your opponent directly as long as you didn't have one of these cards. But according to the rules, as long as you have any character, you have to deal with that character first, and then you can attack your opponent directly. So this just, just blocks from attacking your other characters, basically. Another weird thing about this game is 
uh, if you block with a card, uh, the damage carries over, like trample and magic. So if I attack with four attack into this guy, my opponent will lose two life. But they can discard a card from their hand that matches the guild to cancel the damage. That's something that we didn't do in our games whatsoever either. So that's a weird thing. So since I didn't actually play this game how you're supposed to, I don't know how to feel about a lot of the things, so I'm not going to judge it too much. But there's a lot of weird mechanics in this game. There's Cleopatra, obviously. Gotz von Berlichingen? I horribly butchered that name. I'm sure he's someone famous, I just don't know who it is. Jack Churchill. James Watts. Joan of Arc. Of course. Orville Wright. One of the Wright brothers. Presley the King. That is Elvis Presley. I do not know what this game is on, but <laughs> it's on something. Wilbur Wright. There's the other brother. And then here we have an invention. So this is uh, this is a gear card. Excuse me. Use a card that you attach to your characters and they do things like give them more attack. And then we have a base card. So you can see that the cost is on the other side on this compared to the left of these guys. So these don't cost the Dyna to play but they have a tech level requirement, basically. Something else I just learned by reading the rules. So your tech level is how many cards you have in your HQ zone. So if you have four cards, your tech level is four. As long as your tech level is equal to or greater than the card number here, when you put this face down in your HQ zone, you can flip it up uh, as long as your level is that much. And so while it's in your HQ zone, you can tap it to discard a card to draw a card. And since you don't tap your base, your HQ cards to get energy, you could still get your full energy and then tap it to do something. Now, command cards. This is where it gets weird. This really reminds me of Versus, this card frame. So the same thing as the base here. They have the tech level instead of a cost to play them. So command cards can be put uh, face down, just like any other card in your HQ zone, to be used as energy. But you can flip them up if you meet the requirement to play them from your HQ zone. Or you can play them from your hand like normal. So you can put it down as energy if you're kind of low on energy. Or you can just play it from your hand. And then you can play it from HQ zone later on by flipping it up. It's complicated and weird. I don't know how I feel about it. Precision Shot. Another command card. And then we have Shrink Ray for the last command card. So yeah, I don't really know what to say about this game so far. Since I played a completely wrong demo game, I can't like have a final decision on how the game works. I have to play it with someone else so I can get a better idea of it. But I just don't see this game doing very well, and I hate to say that. Uh, the caster game I can see doing perfectly well because people love anime girls. <laughs> this one I just don't see it going on for too long. I, like, I can't see this game being a big booming game this time next year. It comes out uh, either October or September this year, and I just don't think it's going to do very well, unfortunately. It doesn't do anything crazy, really, with game mechanic-wise. The art's beautiful, but it is kind of generic and boring, especially the card layouts and frames. I don't know. I don't want to, like, bash a card game that I obviously don't know a lot about because I had a bad demo game for it, but uh, I just can't see them supporting this for very much after it already comes out. I don't see it going very far. But it could be horribly wrong. It could be it could be magic next year. Who knows? <laughs> That's it for me. I'll have more of a Gen Con videos coming out really soon. Thank you guys for watching. Any questions, of course, let me know. And as always, have a nice day.